You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. And today is our first host call of the weekend. We had so many questions come in over the last couple weeks. We are actually going to be doing four per episode this weekend, today and tomorrow. And I'll try to catch up as much as I can. Really, really important. I, I will get to every single one of your questions. It might just take an extra week or so, but I do promise every question that comes in, I will make sure that I dedicate myself to giving you those answers. So please do feel free to keep them coming. All right. So I want to get right into it with our first house call. And Stephanie asked, should someone take charcoal capsules while on a detox? So this actually came in with our support group, and I wanted to bring it to you because we've heard a lot about charcoal and how it can help detoxify as well. The difference with charcoal is this. It's not a detoxifier. Okay, it is, and I'll get about how, but it's not, meaning like it doesn't purify your blood, it doesn't support your liver. That's what the detox is that I'm talking about, right? So when this person was on the Dr. Ball detox, they said, can I take this every morning? And I said, although the idea is sound, it is smart, charcoal helps bind things up, it's not going to help us detox what we want. So let's say that you got sick to your stomach, you ate food at a restaurant, and now you have an upset stomach, or maybe you got food poison, you're feeling it the next day. Taking charcoal charcoal capsules once or twice a day would be a smart idea. That would help to bind up the bacteria. Now, we have a special type of charcoal and program that we use, and it's at Stephen Cabral store. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash store. I don't want to keep saying that website address. Um, and you'll just see our intestinal cleanse. You'll see the exact brands we recommend. You'll see the probiotic that I recommend after taking that, because again, once you bind stuff up, you want to put some good stuff back in. So I do not recommend it, taking it first thing in the detox. And the reason is, whatever you take charcoal with is it's going to bind that up as well, which means if you take it with your vitamins or all-in-one shake, whatever it might be, keep in mind it's going to bind up those vitamins, it's going to bind up those minerals, and it's going to pull them out of the body as well. So it does a great job. It does exactly what it's supposed to, and that's bind up whatever's in the intestines, poisons and all sorts of things, and pull them out of your body. So unless you get food poisoning, unless you get sick to your stomach, anything like that, don't worry about taking charcoal capsules. It's just one more thing you could be taking. And again, anyone with histamines, charcoal would drive them out of their mind. It would just create so many more histamine-based reactions and allergies and itchy eyes. So don't take it unless you need it. All right. Up next is Shauna. Shauna is asking, how do you get parasites and what foods should I stay away from? Okay. So this is a really great question and I want to be able to answer that now and just not scare you, but just kind of talk about all the different ways in which you could get a parasite. Okay. So before I talk about how you'll or you can actually get a parasite, probably a good idea if I tell you what a parasite actually is, right? So a parasite is really any organism or pathogen that can live off of another organism or host, right? So the human would be the host, you. And what it does is it typically enters through your mouth from foods that you've eaten. I'll I'll get to those in a second, or you can catch it in different ways. And what it does then, it it kind of makes its own little home in your intestines, but it can move out of your intestines and into your liver and other parts of your body as well. And that creates a lot more health issues. And hopefully that never happens to any of you. So parasites can include things like tapeworms, pinworms, whipworms, hookworms, roundworms. So basically any type of worm that shouldn't be there specifically and their eggs and ova, all of those things lay. And it sounds kind of gross, but you know, the statistics vary all across the world, the World Health Organization. But they're saying like one in four people have a parasite today and don't even know it. So I'm going to talk about the symptoms that you might have. Um, I want to save that actually for a different episode of, of why you might have a, um, a parasite. But I want to talk about just answer 
your question today. I'll, I'll do a full episode on parasites because I know that's an important topic to talk about. And if you've been following me on Instagram, again, just go to instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. I do two posts a day. They take one minute to read. It's really my best stuff. I mean, I really enjoy Instagram. I like it. I like the, the medium where I can get information out. I just gave all sorts of different natural foods where you can actually help to kill parasites as well. But one of the easiest ways to get parasites is through undercooked meat. I don't eat a lot of meat or any at all, really, but I do eat fish. And for myself, and again, I'm not giving you advice specifically on not to eat meat or anything like that, but for me, I do enjoy eating some fish and I enjoy sushi. But the issue is sushi could also come with parasites. Part of the problem is if you're not getting fish from a a very good source or a lot of sushi comes frozen for three days, which will kill the parasites, and then just thawed naturally. Really important. You can get parasites also from fruits and vegetables, and that's because the water used to wash them could be contaminated, and some fruits and vegetables can be as well. A big thing is parasites from unclean water. That's the main thing. Undercooked meats, the second main. Not fish as much, but yes, undercooked meats and unclean water. So going overseas where the water hasn't been treated can be an issue. Going down to Mexico, a lot of people get worried. Going to islands because the water hasn't been treated as well. Another way to get parasites is also through I mean, some people say you can get them through your feet. That's really, really difficult from the earth or the, you know, the soil itself. Really difficult. But one way you can get it is actually from our animals and being around animals. That is one way. Now, touch your hands, go to your mouth, you can get a parasite that way. Also, improper hand washing after you've used the bathroom. You can get parasites that way as well, especially public bathrooms. So really important, hot water, soap, every time you use the bathroom, wash all of that away. So That's the easiest way. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I can get a parasite pretty much any way possible, and you are correct. I mean, that's why they're saying about one in four people have a parasite, potentially even more. Sometimes it just doesn't cause any issues, and with some people, it does, and that's because of the terrain. That means the balance of good bacteria to the bad bacteria, which might be considered parasites as well. So I'm not going to get into that. I'll get into the symptoms of a parasite um, on a future show, but just keep in mind that if you are going to have meat, And again, I'm not saying not to eat meat. What I'm saying is, if you're going to have it, make sure it's cooked through. If you're going to have fish, ideally it is cooked through as well. But I know a lot of people love sushi and it's just kind of, you take your chances. Make sure you're eating at a good restaurant. If you're getting food from the supermarket, that if it was washed by then, if it wasn't just organic from a local farm, that you'll give it a good wash yourself as well. That's really the best thing you can do. You can't worry about all the different things that you could get or not get. And you can also do parasite testing if you're worried. And that's pretty straightforward as well. Typically do a stool test and you'll be able to get that through a functional medicine practitioner in your area or You can email us and we can send you out a a stool lab as well, as long as you're in the United States or Canada. Okay, so up next is our question from, let's make sure I have the correct one, Tony. Tony is asking, oh, this was a great question, really interesting as well. And you know, it's funny, but I've had multiple people with this same question all in the same week, and this is not a typical one, but I have gotten this one. So Tony, we're using your name, but I've gotten this from a few people, and he or she is asking, are nightly night sweats our body's way of trying to detoxify from a larger issue? My night sweats are so bad, I have stained white sheets yellow, and I'm very worried. I eat healthy, vegetarian, don't really drink, definitely do not smoke, occasionally marijuana, and work out five days a week. Help! Exclamation point. Okay, so Tony, we will absolutely help. And so sweating at night, like profuse sweating at night and sweating out yellow, all this stuff on your sheets is not really the best way that the body tries to detoxify. So that yellow can absolutely be part of the detoxification process. However, having that much sweat at night is really what's called an endocrine imbalance. That that just means a hormone imbalance. So now that I use the big word, I got that out of the way, I can share with you what it really is. So it means like fight or flight, anxiety, sympathetic nervous system stress, high cortisol potentially at night, or potentially higher levels of estrogen. All of these things can cause that night sweat. Night sweat should not happen, especially if you wake up with the night sweat. You don't just sleep through the night. So this fight or flight imbalance can sometimes be a lack of magnesium. It can sometimes be too high of a level of cortisol because of other factors, 
improper hypothalamus uh, pituitary adrenal access. So that basically means something's wrong with the adrenal glands. They're in too much of a fight or flight. So you really need to test to figure out what that is. You can do a saliva lab test. Again, just go to the, our website, our store. I'm not going to keep saying the website name. If you're interested, you can see the cortisol adrenal test. That will let you know if it's estrogen-based, if it is um, adrenal-based, and it will show you those hormone levels. Now, the yellow that's coming out, yes, that can actually be toxins in your body coming out. Now, it does just because you're eating healthy now doesn't mean that your body didn't store toxins when you were younger and that it's getting them out now. So sounds like you are absolutely on the right track and doing great. If you have not done our detox, I have to recommend it. I mean, this is, you know, you are one of those people we would recommend it to in our clinic. So how can I not recommend it to you? The 7, 14, or 21-day detox, you can do whatever you feel is appropriate for you. And the other reason I recommend it is because it costs less than a week's worth of eating food. So you actually can save money, which is great because you get all of your breakfast paid for you. You get the first two days of meals completely paid for you and all seven afternoon snacks paid for you. So again, literally people are typically saving like 20 or $30 a week by doing that. Now, should you do it every week? No, but there's a time and place for everything, right? So hopefully that answers your question. Really, you have to look into anxiety, stress, sympathetic nervous system dominance. Are you going to bed with your a lot in your mind? Are you stressed during the day? That's kind of a dead giveaway. If you're not, email me back. I'll, I'm happy to um, answer that again. Okay, last question of the day. We're getting our fourth question, one extra this week. Isaac's writing, hi, Stephen. Thank you so much for all you do. I just started listening to your podcast a few weeks ago and I find myself looking forward to each and every one. I was wondering if you could recommend any brand of an all-in-one multivitamin for adults. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate the kind words and I appreciate you listening. Um, Again, this podcast would not exist for people like yourself, so I really do appreciate it. And this is an easy one for me to answer. So, if you literally go to stephencrabal.com forward slash store, you can see what we recommend for our all-in-one multivitamin. Again, we'll link it up in the show notes. Today is episode 252, I believe. Yes, 252. So it's just stephencrabal.com forward slash 252. And I will link up the multivitamin that we use each and every day in my practice. And you know what? I'll also link up the prenatal vitamin that we use. Why not, right? So we'll do the prenatal. Now, Isaac, just as a little caveat, 80%, eight out of 10 people, maybe nine out of 10 people use the all-in-one shake that we recommend. So it's called dailysupportshake.com. Why do they use it? Because it is your multivitamin. It is your minerals. It's your antioxidants. It's B vitamins. It's your liver support. It is all, and it's 15 grams of vegan protein, pea and rice protein. So it's hypoallergenic. And we did that for a reason because I do so much food sensitivity testing that I can't know, I can no longer recommend dairy-based proteins. So Isaac, that is literally what I do myself every morning. It's what everyone does. And it literally, Literally cost you two dollars per shake. That's it. So that's the cheapest breakfast you could ever do in the world. And for a multivitamin, it gives you a multivitamin plus a protein, plus extra minerals, plus liver detox, plus electrolytes, which I didn't even name before. So you can't find a supplement for all those supplements for less than six, and typically at least six dollars per day. This is only two dollars, and you can save even more money by buying in bulk. Just go to dailysupportshake.com. You'll see that. But let's just say you're you know really enjoy. You don't want to do a smoothie in the morning um, or mid-afternoon, and you just really enjoy eating whatever your breakfast is. Well, I'll link up the multivitamin that we recommend in our practice, and that as well is obviously a, a great deal, and I'm happy to do that for you. So thank you everyone for asking the questions this week, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Be sure to come back tomorrow. I answer four new community questions, so many great ones coming up. Really looking forward to answering those as well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend, and I'll talk with you tomorrow. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. 
Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.